Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Miss Darling and you're in my studio. And today we're going to be talking about overlapping shapes. It's a design style in the collage and junk journal industry that you don't necessarily see in the art industry where there is painting going on. There are other overlapping shapes that are formal styles, but I'm calling this, because it doesn't have a label at this point, overlapping shapes. And I made this master board. I used, of course, a backing board. I put a bunch of lines on it. It had been a cutout section of a abstract painting I had done years ago and didn't want so I cut them up into eight and a half by eleven sections for masterboard purposes but by themselves they went nowhere so I decided to use them as the backing board for uh, embellishing onto them and creating something of worth. I have glued on to the top of them various antique book pages. I have put on some transparent stickers for these uh, florals. I think there's three of them there. I have, over the time I've been in the business and working with fabrics, of course I do a lot of ripping of fabrics and you get a lot of threads that come off on the frayed sides and tops and bottoms and whatever. And I collect those. And so I had taken out a bunch of those threads and glued them down on here. And I do advise people to save everything because you never know when you're going to want to use it. So. Here I have a little painted envelope carrier that I stick them in. And you can see I have left a whole bunch of them here. I still have a few that are dark, but I used up most of what I had in that color range. And, you know, I just stick them in here and wait for a time when I might uh, want to use them. So I glued that down and I have various little tags and sayings and canceled stamps and whatever and fabric ends and I just glued everything in more of a haphazard fashion without even thinking too much about it. Just making sure that I covered the entire board as much as possible because I intended this to be a master board that would be cut up into smaller pieces, primarily tags and other types of ephemera. And so when I got the board finished, I made photocopies of it. And here's what it, the photocopy came out. And you can see it's much more subdued than the original. I wish my photocopier gave me a better representation of what I'm actually trying to print, but it doesn't. It's very, very subdued. Anyway, we do the best we can. I don't know if I will get a better result if I scan it and then print it, but just using the copy feature of my photocopier, which is an HP, and it's a good printer, um, this is what I got. And you can see this was on white paper, so my whatever little white there was in the original I was able to preserve. And then just for fun I printed it off on this darker paper. This is cardstock, and you can see that the whites of course have disappeared altogether, and uh, it is really subdued to the point of losing uh, much of the detail in the darker areas, but it still is a a usable master board that can be cut up and used nicely, but 
I uh, went ahead and cut up a duplicate of this. So I'll show you what we have here. Now these were some of the end pieces that were not cut up into anything that I can use other than to use as um, scraps for other purposes. So I wound up with this small tag and this one. This could be a small bookmark, and but it actually is uh, an end piece that uh, was not uh, part of the tags. So then I have a larger one of the two small tags and then a larger one. And then I was able to get these two quite large tags. And you can see how fun they are when you cut them down into, you know, you take a really, really busy master board and you cut it down into smaller shapes. Suddenly something that didn't look all that big, for instance, this three doesn't look all that big when you compare it to the larger board, but when you cut it down and put it on a tag, it suddenly becomes really huge and just fantastic. I love how these uh, come out. They're so random. You never really know quite what you're going to get. I use acrylic templates that I made so I can lay my templates down right on top of the of the sheet and decide exactly where I want my tag to be cut from. And then I just draw an outline around the acrylic template. So if you want to know how to make those, I have a video in which I teach you how I made mine. And so if you go to the playlist of my channel, you'll find it there. Should be quite easy to find. Uh, I will try to remember to link um, link to it in the description box below this video. And if I am remiss in doing that and you can't find it, just give me a comment and ask me to get that link for you and I'll be happy to do that. But anyway, you can see how fun they are. Now what I do is I glue these. I should have I should have glued the entire sheet to another sheet of cardstock before I cut them out because now I've got to cut them out twice. I don't care for my tags to be this flimsy. So I always glue them to another sheet of cardstock and then cut them out and then oftentimes I will sew around the perimeter before I'm finally done. And that just gives you a really nice sturdy card and it just in your hand it feels like it has so much more value and substance. So I recommend that everybody do that. And um, anyway, I just wanted you to see how many tags I got from that one master board. And of course you can print off as many of them as you like once you have your master board made. And I always advise uh, don't use the master board itself because then you don't have it anymore. But if you make photocopies you can do that a zillion times. And just by placing your template in a different place on the master board you can get a tag that looks altogether different from what I have here and so you know there are just so many uses for them and of course it doesn't have to be tags you can make postcards you can make art cards um, envelopes you can you know just do a whole lot with them and I just would be absolutely delighted if I got something like this as a gift or with a journal I make tons of tags ahead of time and then when I make a journal or ha make something where I need ephemera I just go to my large stash of pre-made material and pick what I feel works color wise and and design and feeling wise to go with that project. 
So I'm never at a loss for having plenty of, of pre-made things to choose from. And it's nice to not have to ever worry about what am I going to put in my journal? Or what am I going to, you know, uh, stuff something with when you have a load of things that you've made in advance in all different colors and sizes and and you it just is so much faster to do it you know kind of in a gang mass production manner mm -hmm.